everyone, Karen aka The Warp Spinster here. Thanks for joining me on my channel. Today I just want to do some sewing. It's been a really interesting couple of days. Interesting in the Chinese curse, we live in interesting times sort of ways. And I just want to settle in and do some sewing. So I have my project here that you may remember from the previous Quilt With Me video which is taking half square triangles and inserting various widths of strips in the middle of them. Well, not necessarily in the middle, but you know, I guess it is sort of in the middle. I don't know, you can, you'll have to bear with my <laughs> lack of coherence today, I guess. Anyway, I have finished, I don't know, somewhere between 40 and 50 of these. And I have, quite a few more cut, which are ready to go. But I've been thinking that, you remember in the last video, I suggested that we could take bets for how long it would take me to finish this quilt. I'm guessing that those numbers are pretty high. So what I think I want to do is brainstorm some ideas for how I might make a quilt that isn't just solid altered half square triangles because that will take me more years than I have left in my life. So I've got my design book here, my sort of ideas book that I jot things down in. Back in my working days in my previous career when I wasn't sleeping well, I would challenge myself to design five quilts and then I could go, then I would go to sleep. Now, sometimes those ideas were pretty good and sometimes they were, wow, <laughs> not gonna work at all. But I have all sorts of ideas in here and I have made some of them. Some others are still floating around in my head and will get made at some point. I just noticed this one that I really like, but that's not what we're here why we're here today. So I want to do just some large thumbnails here and this is a sketchbook so things will be pretty sketchy. I could cover an entire quilt and I could make it whatever size so I could actually you know make a little tiny quilt with these already but assuming I want something wall hanging size at least. My original thought was that I would just do one of my famous vertical stripes at the one third mark. You know about the rule of thirds where you put your focal point, you divide your canvas or whatever into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. And then you place the, the pieces that you want to really focus on at either these intersection points for this grid or along one of those lines, either horizontal or, or vertical. So you aren't putting anything exactly in the center. And I like a lot of designs that way. I do that a lot. So, and for some reason, I always like them on the left third, not the right. I don't know why. So then I thought I could you know, do my fractured, altered half square triangles or whatever, just all the way down through here. And that's an option. That might happen. We'll see. Another option might be, make sure that's in camera here and in frame. So I could do other things. I could do just squares that are arranged in any fashion here, and I could make them different sizes, of course. Um, I could even nest some in there. I could do rectangles instead of squares. I could do circles, which that would be kind of interesting. Let me think about that. If I did circles, in a lot of my modern quilt designs, you might see a lot of circles and bars because I just love those two together for some reason. If I did a circle with these, then I would piece them together into a square and then cut the circle. And I think I would end up probably doing a reverse applique 
around it. Or I guess I could stay stitch the edges and actually just piece that circle in. I don't mind doing circles. Depends on how large the quilt is and how much I have to fling around. Or I could do a, yeah, I could make it look like a lollipop. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, no. And do a square down here or, I don't know. I think it's going to be one of these two. So either the third stripe or some squares. But in any case, I want to start putting them together. I have a really short attention span, so I'm tired of fracturing, oops, sorry, with the tripod, of fracturing those triangles. Now I want to start putting them together. I have sewed a couple together that are, of course I won't be able to find them now, there they are, that were the same size on at least one side so that I could put them together without having to put any filler strips in there. And now I'm to the point where I'm going to have to start using filler strips. So in order to make this match up with that, then I have to put a strip at least that width over here. Here's a piece I've got that I think will make it even with the quarter inch seam. Maybe not, but I can always slice things off. Those are my two choices. I can add things on or I can cut them off. Let me go over to my Fox 2170. Got my favorite old GE iron fired up here. And fired up is true for it. It is it gets quite warm. Press that strip back and see what I've got here. You know, that's just about perfect. I may end up slicing a little bit off of that, but it's pretty good actually. Let me clean up this. That is not very straight there. That's the fun of this improv stuff. Just make it happen. Now, this is a pretty small piece, but I'm going to hang on to it because it may be just what I need when I need a filler somewhere. And so now I can sew these together. Excuse me. How's your week been going, everyone? I have, I've had an interesting one, as I said. A couple of weeks ago, I took my sheet in. Let me finish the sewing here. I took my Jeep. Mort and I have been together for 24 years now. So Mort is not a new car, but then I'm not a new person. So that's okay. We get along fine. I didn't use Mort much during the pandemic. I did try to take him out for a drive every now and again and out on the highway to burn off some of the carbon. But I was a little bit lax in maintenance because I just wasn't driving it much. But the air conditioning conked out on me and I was doing a guild presentation in class at a town about two hours from here. So I thought, it's 110 degrees out. I really do want some air conditioning in my car <laughs> when I'm driving that far. So I went in to have the air conditioning fixed and do an oil change. And in the process, they found some other things, which, you know, on a 24-year-old car, you are going to find. So I said, okay, go ahead and fix it. And then... <laughs> They said, it, it really is due for a tune-up. It's running a little clunky, so think about doing that. I said, okay, fine. You're right. I'm sure it needs a tune-up. So I took it in the next day. So now I've added up to about $1,100 on my Jeep. Still cheaper than a new car. And, of course, less than I pay on maintenance for myself. So it seems fair enough for more. 
So on Tuesday, I'm coming back from my volunteer gig at the public library, and I had stopped off to get a sandwich and some basically just lemon-flavored water at Jimmy John's. I just do a little bit of lemonade and then a lot of water when I get a drink there. So I'm headed home, and on the way home, I have to go up a, a pretty steep hill, and I'm, I don't know, a few yards from the crest of the hill, and my car dies. It starts stuttering and sputtering and stops. I try to back it up enough that I can turn it into a side street, but there's no way I can do that safely, and I might very well just end up right in the middle of the street. So I do manage to get it off to the side, and you know the, the tires turn toward the curb, and I'm sitting in the car, and I call AAA. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. It might be an hour. Now, I'm at this point just a few blocks from two high schools that are due to let out in about an hour. <laughs> And I really do not want to be at that place on a hill, but not much I can do about it. So, okay. And I have to stay in the car because if something happens and it, it starts to drift backward again, somehow I've got to be there to put my foot on the brake. So here I'm chatting and not, not doing what I'm supposed to be doing here. So I am sitting there sweating drinking my lemon flavored water and everyone's going around me very nicely but pretty soon a police cruiser pulls up behind me and I thought yeah that figures you know why not so he pulls up comes up and I have cranked down the window anyway I could start the car long enough to crank down the power windows and um he basically says, so what's up, ma'am? Well, my Jeep died, toe's coming, what can I say? And he said, I just don't like where you're at. And I'm, I hear you, officer, I'm not really wild about this myself, but what am I gonna do? So he asked me who was coming, what, what tow company, and I said, I don't know, it's AAA, whoever they call, probably Arrow. And he said, well, I'll wait with you until they come. And I said, well, he said it could be up to an hour. And he said, nah, I can get it here. I can get him here faster than that for you. I said, okay. So he, he calls and he comes back and says, they'll be here in 10 minutes. Awesome. So indeed, tow truck did arrive within 10 minutes. And <laughs> tow truck driver gets out and says, how you doing? And the uh, cop gets out of the car and says, how you doing? Oh, good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And I, I just stood there and looked from one to the other and said, well, I'm not having my best day. And they both laughed. Anyway, it turned out all right. Um, the um, police officer said he have a ride coming. And I said, no, I'm just going to walk home. I'm just doing a few blocks from home and he said it it's 110 out and I said yeah I'm I'm aware but I need to walk off this nervous energy and he said well not everybody likes to ride in a police car <laughs> no that's not it although you know it's not on my bucket list but I guess I could check that one off I said no no I really want to walk so it really was 110 degrees out and I was a little bit sweaty by the time I got home so they, I had called Brakes Plus where I take it and let them know it was coming. And they called me pretty quickly and said, your fuel pump went out. Well, isn't that just the thing? <laughs> he said, is this your original fuel pump? And I said, yeah, I think so. I don't remember changing one in here. So I said, well, that lasted a long time. This one's going to last you for the rest of your life. Okay. <laughs> I've been there enough in the last couple of weeks. They know who I am and how old I am. So they got it done within a couple hours and he said this fuel pump has a lifetime warranty and it's a good one. Said, yeah, okay. So just chalk that up to more money for the car maintenance budget. 
and I have to empty out my savings at this rate. <laughs> anyway, it's it's all fixed. It was only a couple hours and you know it went all right, but yikes. I would give a lot to not do that again. Thankful for AAA and for a nice police officer and a good maintenance shop and all of that. But that sort of stuff makes you tired after a while, you know? All right. Oh, look at that. I didn't plan that, but these are pretty close. This does not look really even down there. So I think I'm going to put these two together and then even that out there. What do you think? In short, I'm I'm hoping that your week is going better than mine. I really can't complain. You know, this is a third world problem I'm whining about. But I'd rather not do that again anytime soon. Good news this week. I have been I put a raised bed in my backyard next to my patio this year to grow some cucumbers, zucchini, tomatoes, and peppers, bell peppers. And it, it was an ex, it's an experiment because I really don't think there's enough sun back there during the day to do vegetables very successfully. And I'm right. It's... Um, not the best place. So I think actually next summer I'm going to put a raised bed in the front yard in my perennial bed because that gets a ton of sun. May as well make use of it. And I'm that neighbor that doesn't put fertilizer on my lawn or chemicals or anything. Um, so that will be a adding to the sustainability, I hope, of my yard. Anyway, so I did the um, cucumbers, just didn't make it. The zucchini got eaten up by squash bugs before it ever got anywhere. Tomatoes are doing eh, okay. I'm getting a few of them. And the bell peppers are just a couple of plants that are producing anything. And I harvested my first red bell pepper the other day and a couple more are ripening now. So I'm at least getting a few tomatoes and, and peppers out of it. But next year we'll be working for some more. All right, what do you think? It's just this fractured kind of chaotic look. I think I'm gonna call it crackled. You know, the crackle paint that Crafters use, make something look old when it isn't. This will be a modern crackle. All right, I'm kind of liking that. Let's see, get some brighter colors in here. Some of them are just pretty darn close to being the same size, but not quite there. So then I need to make a choice. Do I want to I really like this one, so I think I'm gonna leave that. But what I might do is slice some off here and put another piece across there. Do I wanna do that or do I want to cut them all to this? I don't want it to look too fractured. So let's sew these three together and then I'll square it up. And I might do something like, um, let's find, ooh, here's a nice big one. I don't want that big. And say I have something like this, then I can, once these are together, do a filler strip here so I can line those up. This is how I do orphan block quilts too. At some point, uh, I'll be working on my Christmas, my orphan block Christmas quilt, which is on my priority UFO list. And you can see how, <laughs> how quickly I'm working on that. Huh? I just finished filming a class for Skillshare 
And that always means I have created at least one, if not two, new UFO projects. And sure enough, I have two UFO projects now. Plus, I'm working on a Bargello quilt for Halloween. I don't like Halloween, but I figured I should have a Halloween quilt. And Moda has this, um, I'm sorry, I forget who the designer is. It's terrible, I'm sorry. Um, it's called Old Maid, M-A-D-E, but it's a Halloween sort of takeoff on the Old Maid card game. And since I am an old maid by that definition, I just thought that was really fun. So I am doing a Bargello quilt with that, that collection. And I'm using Black Cat Creations. I used to be a layer cake, which I really love that pattern. That's really about the only way I'll do a Bargello anymore because <laughs> you don't have to select the fabrics. You just use a layer cake or a jelly roll. So 10 inch squares or two and a half inch strips. And I think they're fun to make. So I am, I have that project too, because Halloween is not too far into the future. Although it comes every year, so assuming I'm still around in a year, and I hope I am, then I could do it then, but it's that whole short attention span thing. All right, now I purposely did that so I would retain as much of this pink as possible, but have something to cut there to even it out. I suppose we better press that, huh? There are a lot of seams in this thing, as you can imagine. So there will be no hand quilting done on this. Not that there would have been anyway, but... All right, let's do some straightening up here. Honestly, this is going together a little more easily than I feared it might. because I can, and I think it is because I can easily just slice stuff off and even it up. If I'm doing an orphan block quilt, then I don't want to be cutting off pieces of the block. I do want to trim off that dog ear. I would call it something other than dog ear. It sounds very cruel to be cutting off a dog's ear. So we can do that, and then we could have this piece here, or we could do a larger one. Have a piece here, larger white piece. We're getting a lot of white in there. Let me think about this. Let's take a look at it with a white piece there. See what we think. It's a pretty good sized white piece. How do we feel about that? Well, let's do it. We're just sitting down and sewing. We'll see how we feel about it when we finish. <laughs> Got a seam ripper here, but I'm determined to not use it on this unless something goes horribly wrong. which admittedly could happen the way the week's gone. No, you're right. It really hasn't been that bad, but <laughs> I'm sitting on that hill thinking, ay, ay, ay. Yeah. But I was happy at least that it hadn't happened while I was on the road last week. That was a good thing for sure. Boy, considering that I thought I had squared these puppies up, <laughs> I hadn't done a very good job. 
Now there's nothing that says these have to be straight cuts, however. I could cut something like that, do this, put some white in there. I have so much diagonal stuff going on when I split the triangles though. So I'm not sure that I want to do that. Now, if I want these to match up, I'll have to slice some off here. I think I'll be okay with that. Oh, yes, okay. I warned you about potential incoherence for me today. Are any of you doing any half square triangle projects? Love to have you tell us in the comments so we can find out what everybody's doing and are you going to have extra half square triangles? I don't know how I feel about cutting this much off here, but we're just going to do it. Close our eyes. Don't close your eyes when you're cutting and just do, oh, those match up. Oh, I hadn't really planned on that happening, but that's okay. All right, let's do it. Maybe my mojo is back. Mort is happy now. He's got a new fuel pump. He's got new tires, all kinds of things. liking that. These almost look like clear story windows. Yes, I know. I see interesting things and in... I've never had to take an ink blot te test, thankfully, because <laughs> who knows what they would conclude about me. What do you think? I think that's not bad. So if I wanted to do, say, a wall hanging size, I could just call this a square rectangle and maybe put a little bit of a border around it, maybe, and then piece it into a quilt. I don't know. But I'm gonna set that section aside for now and start on another one. I'm pretty pleased with that. And here are two that can reasonably go together. Again, I've got two choices. I can either sew a thin strip here so it'll match up here, or I can cut it off. I think in this case, I wanna try doing a thin strip just, just because I can. See how it looks. It will be a pretty thin strip. Pretty thin indeed. The Christmas Orphan Block quilt that I'll be sharing with you one fine day is, <laughs> has come out of a lot of demos that I did for the local quilt shop a couple, three years ago now. And I did all of the demos and the sample blocks out of red, green, and beige gold kind of thing so that I would have enough blocks to make a quilt out of them rather than just having these single blocks floating around. And 
I've had it up on my design wall about 18 times now. <laughs> saying, yes, I'm going to sew that together. And then something else comes up and comes off the design wall. And I have photos of it in about 10 different configurations, but I haven't started putting any of it together yet. Because, well, that whole attention span thing. So there's a start. Here's a nice bright green. I like that. And a bright red, which I'm going to want to put a strip on the side of the green there. See, I was talking Christmas and now I'm doing red and green. I'm a little spooky sometimes. I have a, a quilt designing friend who does really wonderful, wonderful things and really humorous things. And I really would love to be just a little mouse or something in her brain just to see how it works because she just has the most marvelous things. But I don't think anyone would want to be a little mouse inside my brain. no matter how much cheese might be found there. Okay, got that. Do I want that off to that side or over here? That's a lot of white over there, so I think I'm going to do it this way. like a little bit of the red's gonna have to come off too. I really like that bright green. I didn't used to like really bright colors and Part of it was my mom's influence. She really liked earth tones, and I do too. I, I still like them, and I like those traditional earth tony kinds of quilts. But the older I've gotten, the more I'm liking the bright. Maybe it's just the world, <laughs> and I want to brighten up my own piece of it. Okay, that's looking all right. I recognize that you may be watching me do this and thinking, what is she doing? Why is she doing it that way? Is she crazy? What possessed her to think that was a good idea? This is what I'm liking today. For my sanity sewing. Don't you have those days when you just really need to sit down and sew? I have a quilting friend who <laughs> has been used to occasionally say, would you just go down and sew already? You're cranky. Can't stand it. Go sew. <laughs> All right. We could do white over there or white over here, or we could add some more on here and end up doing a strip here to put those together. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I would do it here. I've got this strip already up here, so I could put one down here. Don't know if that seems logical to anyone else, but it's what I'm going to do. To 
show you this iron. It's one that I was gifted when the local quilt shop closed and I, I just love it. This is an old GE and it is, sorry, I didn't mean to put that right in your face. It is the iron, the very model of iron that I had when I was learning to sew when I was seven. I just love it. It's good and hot. Doesn't have steam, but I don't use steam when I'm quilting. It's heavy enough, but not too heavy. Love it. All right, so those two are ready to go together. I decided I was doing it this way, didn't I? Okay, there really are a lot of seams here. Mucho, mucho seams. I'm sorry, you're probably seeing a lot of my elbow, aren't you? Every time I press, you can see my elbow and whatever is happening on my watch. So here is another section. I'm liking this. Now, do I want to do a long strip here, do you think, and have those match up? Or is that too matchy-matchy? I know that's not how we usually use matchy-matchy, but all right, what if we do this? What do you think? And then if we have like a long strip that goes this way, yeah, I think that'll be all right. I don't spend much time in decision making on this, as you can see. If it's doable, let's try it. been listening to audiobooks while I'm sewing. I have not had much opportunity to read, which is pretty hard on me. The librarian in me just, it's like needing to sew. Sometimes I just need to sit down and read. But I've had so much sewing and designing to do that I've been doing audiobooks instead. And that's good too. Check with your local public library, by the way. Especially in the States because they may have a program by which you can borrow audiobooks and eBooks. And it's all done online. Before I retired from my previous career, I spent a lot of time working on that for our member libraries and doing troubleshooting for it, especially when it first started up and people weren't quite sure how it was working or how to work it, lots of training sessions. So it's a pretty good deal. It's a, a really nice service. What do you think? I think I'm liking it. This will be my last seam here before I let you go. Let you go. Get that. <laughs> to do some production work on that 
class video that I just finished filming. I wanted to get that out by the end of the month and it's coming up pretty quickly here. And I have a service pattern design project due at the end of the month as well. So, but I just needed to sit down and sew. Have I said that before? And there we have a whole section. I like it. I don't know how you feel about it, but let me know if you have some ideas for, ooh, ooh. Just had another idea. What if we made, it's not a square, but what if we cut those diagonally again and put a strip in the middle? Hmm. We could just fracture this thing within an inch of its life, couldn't we? Something to think about. I don't know that I'll do it, but it's something to think about. All right, that's about it for here. I need to go do some editing on the film. It's been, it's felt good to sit down and do this and have a chance to chat with you. It always feels like I have people here quilting with me. So thank you for joining me and remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm happy you're here and I hope I'll see you again. Bye. Be happy, be healthy, and be quilting. Peace out.